Well, why don't you get your Bibles out? And, and we're going to look into the book of Galatians as was done uh, the two weeks ago. Pastor Ryan was here last week, but the week before, uh, Pastor Jill and two other lovely ladies were here worshiping as I, and, and sharing God's word. We're studying the book of Galatians. And as you remember, this is written by the Apostle Paul as a letter of encouragement, as a letter of correction to a church in Galatia, which is modern Turkey in that area now. People he'd known, people he had in his mind, he was led by the Spirit of God to, to kind of confront some things that uh, were talked about earlier, but I'll, I'll remind you, because they were trying, they started off strong. Now, now listen, when, when Paul went and, and he went out on his missionary trips, he went primarily, firstly, to a synagogue, to the people that were the Jewish people, and talked to them and brought clarity and reality that instead of looking for a Messiah far off, someday, someday far away, that Jesus was actually the one who came as the only Son of God, the living Son of God, and that they need to believe in Jesus as their Lord, as their Messiah, who would be returning again in the future. And many adopted that teaching, believed it, saw their lives actually transformed by the power of God. But it didn't stop there. It went outside the synagogue, out into the highways and byways, and, and captured the imagination, the hearts of those who were not Jewish, but were what they called Gentiles, okay, that were people who were non-Jews. And that's mostly us, right? That's, who, that's where we kind of fit in. And then he... Paul went and, and as he traveled back and forth, he listened to the Spirit of God who was giving him direction and guidance to write back and encourage those believers to continue in what God had done in them to bring freedom into their lives. So today that's what we're really talking about. We're talking about freedom in Christ. Say that with me. Freedom in Christ. Okay, freedom in, in Jesus, but freedom, freedom in the anointing of Jesus Christ that still continues to work today in our era, in our lives, in our communities, that God is at work amongst us to change our lives, to bring freedom in. Now, that this is interesting because I remember back to before I knew Jesus, before I was a, a follower of God, okay, before I pursued after God, I didn't know that I needed freedom. How about you? Did, did, bef can you remember before Christ? <laughs> did you know you needed freedom at that time? Well, some were rascals. Well, I was a little bit of a rascal. But, but not as bad as some. So because I hadn't done any of the, the top 10 sins of uh, adultery and robbing banks and killing people, then I thought I was okay because I was just a normal person around. Why do I need freedom? Because if you need freedom, you must feel bound up to be set free. But when I surrender my life to Jesus through a simple prayer, a heartfelt prayer of commitment to, to follow him from that day on, something changed on the inside and I felt liberated. I felt free. I felt like, wow, something is different. Now, how many, put your hand up if you can identify with that. Was that your experience as well? So it's like a, it's a spiritual transaction that goes beyond what the mind would understand. Because our mind doesn't always see us the way we are. If, if you grow up in a certain way, that's normal. Everything's normal. It's just normal. But when Jesus comes into your life, instead of being what's natural, it becomes supernatural. And now you recognize, wow, before I was bound, before I needed freedom. And now today, I've been set free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to be in the uh, fifth chapter of Galatians and start at verse number 13. So, so turn there in your Bible, Galatians 5, verse 13. Lord, help us through your word to uh, discover your freedom for us, to discover the, the pitfalls that tries to pull us back, and then, Lord, your focus for our future. Help us to receive it in Jesus' name. Galatians 5, 13, I'm living... New Living Bible says this, for, for you've been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters. God is speaking to us today. God's speaking to you wherever you are around the world when you're, when you're hearing these words. It's not just to the church here, but it's words to the world around us. 
For you've been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters, but don't use your freedom or liberty to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. Let's continue. For the whole law can be summed up in this one command, love your neighbors as yourself. But, but if you're always biting and devouring one another, and <laughs> watch out, beware of destroying one another. Verse 16, so I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. Wow. Does that apply to us today? Have you, have you seen uh, even people in the church that bite one another? Do sheep bite? Sometimes they do. Sometimes they say things that are biting to those around them. Uh, even when they know it's that way, they sometimes say it anyway in, in a malicious fashion. So, yes, there can be guilt on many of our parts in this. But God wants us to know he's calling us different. And so I, I divide it up kind of in, in three points right out of these verses. And so the first one is, you have been called to live in freedom. Tell your neighbor, you are called. You're called. Called by who? Called by God. Have you heard the voice of God call out to you? Well, I didn't hear an audible voice, but I felt on the inside God drawing me into a relationship with him. Have you discovered that he doesn't stop doing that? He still calls us to come closer to him, to come into freedom with him. Well, once we're born again, are we set free? Yeah, we, we are, we are. I, I see I've got some uh, verses up there for you, for you to follow along. In John 15, 16, it says, you did not choose me, but I chose you, God speaking. I chose you that you would uh, do what? That you would go and bear much fruit. That whatever you ask the Father in his name, he would give you. So God has chosen you in order to have a successful life in order to make a difference in your life, but not just your life, in the life of those around you. God has chosen you for freedom. Not just for your own freedom, but freedom for those around you as well. You know, Dr. Harrison, Kathleen, we're, we're up on stage. And God has chosen them to work in a, in a field that they're always touching people that are in anxiety and, and issues and, and struggling with issues of life. And he set them free so that they can set others free with the power of Jesus Christ flowing through. Is that right? Did I get that okay? I, I see others as well that God has chosen in some of those same fields, Dr. V. <laughs> and just to be able to allow the power of God from his liberty inside of them to flow out. But guess what? It's not just folks in the counseling field in direct helping. God's power, his freedom is inside of you. He has given you that freedom so that it can flow out from you in the hospital where you work, in the school, look at the college, university where you are, wherever you are, that same freedom is there for you to live free, but for that same, your freedom to flow out to others and touch them. Some in your family, but some outside. Because God has called you to live in freedom. Do you know when you lose freedom? How many think, the, let, let's take a vote. How many, how many would understand that when you lose that freedom in your life, you recognize it? Can I see those hands that say yes? Okay, we have a few. Okay. How many would say no, you don't recognize it? Come on, it can be either way. I'm seeing some hands. How many don't want to vote? <laughs> More. You think there's a right or wrong answer? No, there's a, the, both of those answers are true. So when you lose your freedom and you fall into a sinful practice that is recognized by you as sin or maybe somebody else points it out to you that that's, that's against God's will for your life, then, wow, you're confronted and you know you've lost some freedom. But, but there's, uh, there's a reality that, uh, that, that uh, we, we also tend to lose our freedom so little sometimes that over time, 
it kind of slips away. And then we discover we've slipped back a long ways from where we were. And there's, many of you know the illustration that if you put a, a frog in a pot of cold water and you put the pot on the stove and turn on the heat, the frog is not going to notice anything is changing. As the water gets hotter and hotter, it's not going to try to jump out because it's a cold-blooded blooded creature. It's just going to continue to be in there until you have frog's legs for dinner. And unfortunately, we can get caught in that. And the context of this of uh, this portion of the Bible is that some were saying, oh, you can, yes, you're free in Jesus Christ, but you also need to add the, the Jewish teaching. You need to follow the Jewish laws as well. You need to follow the dietary laws. You need to follow all the rules and, and all of the rest of that as well as Jesus adding other things in. And instead of it bringing more freedom, they were now getting bound up to the rules of the law instead of the freedom in Jesus Christ. Can that happen today? Oh, it, it absolutely can, can't it? And so we're not a rules-based church family. We don't try to point the fingers at, oh, you're doing this and you're doing that and you're doing that. No, no, no. We allow the Holy Spirit to touch lives. Now, now we may say, help me understand how you can do that. Tell, tell, tell me, what liberty is that? Because we've actually been bought with a price that is a very high price. Is that right? Jesus purchased our freedom by offering himself up and taking our bondages, our sins on himself on the cross to the point that it separated him from God. I mean, that's, that's a big deal. And he set us free. So always remember you're called to live in freedom. John 8, 36 says, He who the Son sets free is free indeed. That means you're free in all areas. It means you're free for all time as well. I, I like some, some translations, tr translations say set free. Others say makes free. So either way, he makes us free. We are free in, in God's eyes. We are free to be able to please him in every area of life. We're free from the arbitrary rules that try to come around us. When we were pastoring out west, we had people come into our church. Why? Because there was freedom like we experience here today. And they had actually felt a calling from God to his life of freedom. And so they went to a ch another church that, that had a certain name over it and they thought that, that sounded good. So they went there on a Wednesday night on a middle week when they had a service and it was a young lady and she went there dressed as she'd been. She, she, she you know, cleaned herself up and went there and they would not let her in the door because she had long pants on. And in their context, a woman should never wear pants. That's what a man wears. And so they would not allow her in the door. And then she discovered that if she, she actually had a, a new King James Bible with her, that, that as you know, has the roots in the old King James from the 1600s, but has been uh, freshened up with, with the way we say things now, instead of saying thee and thou, to say you, okay? And so they, she discovered that they would not accept her because she used a Bible other than the King James Version. Now, I know none of you would put those rules on people. But they would not even allow her in the door. And so she came to where we are. My point is, there can be arbitrary rules put on us by others on how we should serve the Lord and what we should do. And if we, if we don't, we need to follow the rules or, and come under the bondage of that again. God has not called us to that. He's called us to freedom. Amen? He's called us to live in a way where he can please him. We can be free from the expectations of others as well. <laughs> I found sometimes they cause us to do things that maybe God is leading us in a different way, but they cause us to do things in a way to please our parents, perhaps to please others instead of what, what pleases God. When I think of freedom, I want to put it this way. You are free to excel in life. 
That's the freedom Jesus brings to us. You're free to excel in the areas of life where God is leading you and wants to use you. Can I talk about you again just for a little bit, Dr. Harrison? It's hard to say no when I ask you publicly. I apologize. But, but I, I knew Dr. Harrison and Pastor, Keen, Pastor Kathleen just when they got married around that time frame back in the, the mid-90s. And, and a passion for God, a, a preacher, an evangelist, and, and just wanting to, to please God in all things. And, and went over to Croatia in, in a time of conflict and served there in, in a time of hardship and learned many lessons. And, and God grew you there. And, but when you came back, you know, God was moving in, in different ways. And you discipline yourself to go back to school. Is that right? And you got a master's degree. Did you get a bachelor's first? I guess you did. And then you got a second master's. Is that right? And, and to, why? Because God was leading in a, in a different area. And God wants you to know that you can excel in life. Not just in spiritual life, but he wants us to excel and go beyond what we would without his freedom in our lives. He wants us to to push ourselves to, a, to, I won't say excellence, but I will say excellence. I won't say perfection, but I'll say on to excellence, to have an excellent spirit, to do well in the field that you're called by God to serve in. To do well in the area of life. It doesn't matter that it, it doesn't have to be a, a PhD doctor or anything like that. It can be in the hospital. It can be in the school system. It can be as a line worker in a factory. But you excel above the others. Why? Because you're set free from following the expectations of others and you serve under Jesus Christ and under his freedom. That's what God has brought us freedom for so that we can excel in life. Next week, Tuesday, not, not this coming Tuesday. Following Tuesday, we're having a mayor's prayer breakfast in Brampton. We do once a year. I want to invite everyone to call. We'll put a slide up. You see there. I want to invite you to come. If you, if you use your phone, you can get a, get a ticket for that breakfast in the morning. I'd like to see 2025 from BCF there next week. So pull out your phone and, and get a ticket. But our speaker there is a lawyer uh, from Mississauga who's become a friend of mine. And he... Started off as a, a troublemaker with all kinds of problems. Failing in school, failing in all kinds of areas, getting, getting in trouble with law and everything else. But when he received Jesus and found out about freedom through Christ, his life turned around and he started to apply himself and found that when he believed that God would help him, even in the studies that he'd failed before, to do better, to, to excel in those areas of life, God promoted him, God worked in his life, God allowed him to succeed where now he's on the board of directors of the Ontario Law Society. And so it's not where you start, my friends. When you receive freedom in Christ, all things are possible for you. God has designed you. He's chosen you to excel in life. Don't settle for second best. Because of his freedom, you can do much, much more. Let me go to point two. Point two is this, and it's right out of verse number 13 and 14. Use your freedom to serve one another in love. Freedom is for serving. Say that to your friend. Freedom is for serving. Our freedom is to serve those around us, to serve them motivated by love, not for ourselves, but to serve. Jesus came to seek and to save those that are lost. He came out of heaven in his place of authority, down to earth to actually become a servant to humanity, to serve us by offering up, by paying the, the ultimate sacrifice and offering up his life for you and for me. So my friends, Freedom is so that we can serve him and serve those around us. I, I, I love what the Bible talks about in this. I, I read, read in the book of Jude. Now there's only one, trans, only one, um, one chapter in Jude. In verse number four it says this. I, I say this because some ungodly people have wormed their way into your churches saying 
that God's marvelous grace allows you to live immoral lives. The condemnation of such people was recorded long ago, for they have denied our only master and Lord Jesus Christ. So freedom is not to serve ourselves and our sinful nature. It's not to allow us to do whatever we want. It's not, allow, not to allow us to say, oh, well, I'm free in Christ. I have total freedom. I can do what I want. I can drink as much as I want of alcohol. I can smoke as much dope as I want. I can do all those things. I can do things that, that could harm my body. I can go and I can sleep with the neighbor. I can do whatever. Freedom in Christ is not for us to live immorally. Amen? Amen? Freedom is to live in a way that serves others. Now you understand that if we do things that could harm others, that could set an example for them so that they would fall, that God's going to come back to us and we're going to have to answer for that. So that's why for, for like Jill and I, we decided we, we, wouldn't, we would drink no alcohol. Now I'm not telling you this, I'm just sharing... Our, our rationale spoke to us not to do it spoke to me not to do that and so now we we have expanded that so that our our staff at bcf church sign as part of their their staff covenant that they will not drink alcohol so is alcohol wrong for everyone i'm not saying it is but i'm saying this we understand that as leaders in a church family people look at us and say, I see what you do, and I can do that as well. Is that true? And so, if, if I have a glass of wine with my, with my meal, uh, you, you may look at me and say, okay, well, I, I can have wine too. And get your bottle out and have as much as you want. You don't know whether it's the only glass of wine I've had, or if it's the 20th glass of wine I've had. And so, for my liberty, my freedom, I choose to say Let's keep everything so that we don't harm others around us and become a stumbling block to others. So is that okay? Uh, just as an example for you. Now, I'm not talking to you. I'm just talking to me. That God wants us to understand our freedom is to serve others. Our freedom is to add value to those around us in practical ways. It's to be able to, to help those around us to be able to actually live in God's freedom as well. I have another verse for you. Let, let, let me look at this. Mark chapter 9, verse 35. It says, uh, uh, he sat down, Jesus, called his 12 disciples over to him. And he said, whoever wants to be first must take last place and be the servant of everyone else. What do you think about that? Well, I want to be first. I want to have a place of prominence. Great. As we traveled around the world, we understand this, that many pastors and leaders in congregations around the world are doctors, lawyers, prominent business people that have excelled in their natural life, their business life, their, their vocational life. But they come and they serve as a pastor and lift up people around them and encourage others around. So because you have a place in people's eyes does not mean you cannot serve. In fact, when we were in Brazil in, um, when was that? <laughs> when we were in Brazil in May, we saw the, one of the top, we saw two of, the, two of the top worship leaders, Christian worship leaders in the nation. I mean, they, they're... they're not just a Christian icon that people look at as an artist, but in all of society, they're ones that people buy their stuff and look at them. And they were up singing back up on the worship sets on a Sunday morning. And I watched, because I was on stage, uh, and as I watched, I saw the pastor call, call one of them up to be able to, to participate. They, they, they just came up humbly and served. And I saw the one, one's husband was one of the top soccer players in the nation in past. And even though he had a place of prominence where everybody, every, one, every soccer fan in Brazil, which is almost everybody, knew his name, he was there to serve and was ushering and was helping out. And so serving 
is the way for God to promote people. That's why we wanted to celebrate with these who said, yeah, I want to serve. I want to, I want to give some of my time, some of my energy to be able to serve. Because it's God's way of promoting. And it's God's way of humbling us and helping us recognize that it's not about who we are. It's who Christ is in us. But he wants us to excel. And then as excellers, excellent people, to be able to serve just like Daniel did. I like what it says in Psalm 75, uh, 6 and 7. It says, For exaltation comes neither from the east nor the west, nor from the south, but God is a judge. He puts one down, and he does what? He exalts another. So our attitude has to be not to be lifted up, not to be so wealthy that everybody looks at us. But whatever our wealth is, whatever our life is, it's here to serve others and to lift them up. And that is not just for Sunday. Can, can I speak to you directly? It's for every day that we would serve the Lord with gladness and out in, a, out in the neighborhoods, and in your job, wherever you are, that you'd always see yourself as one who serves those around you. Even if you're the boss, you're there to serve others, to facilitate so that they can do even better in what they're doing so they can achieve more because you are there lifting them up instead of saying, I, I'm bigger than you. Stay down. This is the character of Christ. We're called to this freedom, my friends. And our freedom is to serve. And then lastly, look at what it says in verse number 16. <laughs> verse number 16 says this. It says, uh, so I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature desires. Where does the Holy Spirit live? Is he in heaven? No, he's been sent to earth where he resides in us. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Everyone who believes in Jesus, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So he has come to live inside of us so that he can guide us. In fact, John chapter 16, verse 13 says this. When spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He'll not speak of, of his own will tell you what he's heard. He will tell you about the future. He will bring, the glory, bring me glory, Jesus speaking, by telling you whatever he receives from me. So, so Jesus is communicating with the Holy Spirit who's speaking to us, leading us, guiding us, directing us. But did you notice the first couple words of that verse? Let the Holy Spirit lead you. I want to announce to you, my friends, the Holy Spirit who lives inside of you is speaking to you. Always speaking, trying to direct you, trying to give you insights, bringing God's word back to your mind, back to your heart, telling you, speaking to you so that you can know what God's will is. Does the Holy Spirit speak quietly? Or does he speak loudly? What do you think? How many think quietly? So put your hands up. Lots of hands going up. How many think he shouts at you? Only when you need it. When you have your fingers in your ears. Then he will speak loudly to you. But the Holy Spirit speaks quietly to us. And so then, I want to encourage you. Let's listen to the Holy Spirit. Amen? Let's invite him to speak to us, okay? Let's daily invite him. This is what I do every morning when I'm up and walking around. I'm inviting the Holy Spirit, speak to me. Do we need him to speak to us every day of the week? Do we need his insights on what we do? Whether you're in carpenter, whether you're in, in some field of helping others, whether you're on a, on a line in effect, doesn't matter where we are. We need the Holy Spirit to guide us, speak to us, give us the, the hints we need, the instructions we need, and to be able to hear from Almighty God so that we know what he wants us to do, how he wants us to live. Now, the Bible gives us, gives us good insights. But the Holy Spirit brings the Word of God, which is called the Logos of God, the Word of God, the written Word of God. And he breathes into the Word of God. 
and makes it rhema type word that applies to our specific situation at that point in time to bring forth the life of God. That's what he's doing. That's what he wants to do in your life all week long. Are you ready for that? Again, it doesn't matter what area it is. God has called us for freedom. He's given us his freedom so that we can serve others all week long, so we can add value to them, so that we can lift them up, not pull them down. We're not there to point out all the, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that. We're there to pray for them, lift them up and encourage them and speak life. And then we're here to listen to the Holy Spirit so we know what our assignment is on that day, so we know how we can please Him the very best on that day, at that time. So we're there so that if He speaks to us, we can encourage somebody else with what he speaks to us about and we can lift them up and serve them in practical way. Did you receive God's word today? Will you, will you embrace that today? Let's lift our hands together and let's talk to him. Father, thank you for your goodness. Why don't you t just talk to God. Say, Father, thank you for helping me. Father, thank you for setting me free. Am I the only one saying this? Let's say it right out loud. Thank you for freedom. Thank you for my freedom. I surrender my will to you, Lord. I want your freedom in every area of life. Holy Spirit, speak to me. Show me things. Help me to say yes. I determine to follow your lead. Help me to lift up others. To serve those around me. So that you get all the glory. And Jesus is lifted up. Thank you, Lord, for choosing me. Setting me free. And loving me. Amen. So be it. So be it. Thank you so much for being with us today. I trust that the Word of God impacted your heart just the way it did mine. Remember, if you haven't subscribed yet, you can do that right now. And then tell a friend so they can join us and be online with us each week. If you'd like to help us be able to continue this ministry around the world, you can do so by clicking the link below. And I believe God's going to bless you as you bless many others. Have a great week. God bless you.